In this conversation, we talk about what to do if you have a history or family history of Alzheimer's and dementia, and if the likelihood of you getting it is also inevitable. We talk about if diet can support these things, and if beyond diet, what are other factors that can support brain function? Hi, Dr. Eid. First of all, congratulations again on the success of your book. I knew it would do so well, and I'm so happy for you. As part of your book, you share uh, that the single most important change for your brain health is to reduce inflammation from carbs and seed oils. Yes. So refined carbohydrates and refined vegetable oils, both of these ingredients come from whole foods, but then are factory processed uh, into these very refined products that do damage our health. They no longer behave like foods in the body. So sugars, flowers, cereals, fruit juices, and vegetable oils, such as soybean oil, sunflower oil, canola oil, both of these ultra processed ingredients, which are really the signature ingredients of, uh, of the standard American diet, the so-called standard American diet or the ultra processed uh, industrialized diet, both of these ingredients directly contribute uh, to inflammation throughout the brain and body and something called oxidative stress, which is why we are always told that we are supposed to eat more foods with antioxidants, which is a strategy that doesn't really work very well. But these are the ingredients that can directly cause some of these brain damaging forces. These are, you know, when I was trained to become a psychiatrist back in the late 1990s and early 2000s, I was trained to think of mental health problems as chemical imbalances in the brain to be addressed with medication. But we never really stopped to think about, well, what's causing those chemical imbalances in the first place? And we now understand that inflammation and oxidative stress are two of these really powerful, deeper forces that underlie those chemical imbalances. So the refined carbohydrates, for example, which are essentially naked carbohydrates that turn instantly into glucose in the bloodstream and can cause exaggerated spikes in, in glucose in the bloodstream. These also cause exaggerated spikes of glucose in the brain. And so the higher the blood sugar, the higher the brain sugar. And whenever you're getting this, these excessive waves of glucose in the brain, you are setting off waves of inflammation and oxidative stress throughout the brain, which is very damaging, physically damaging to the delicate architecture of the brain, but also destabilizes brain chemistry. Those neurotransmitters that we're always told are the root causes of psychiatric conditions, things like imbalances in serotonin and dopamine and melatonin. And these two very important neurotransmitters in the brain that we don't hear as much about, glutamate and GABA. So all of these brain chemicals can be thrown uh, significantly off balance by these waves of inflammation and oxidative stress that can come from eating refined carbohydrates and, and, and seed oils as well. The way the seed oils do this is that when linoleic acid, which is uh, the omega-6 fatty acid that's, that's high in a lot of the vegetable oils, the brain absorbs that, that linoleic acid uh, and then tries to burn it for energy. The brain isn't supposed to be burning these long fatty acids for energy. It's supposed to be burning small molecules like glucose and ketones, because when you burn small molecules, you get a lot less inflammation and oxidative stress. So these two signature ingredients of the modern diet, uh, these are directly contributing, not just to the physical damage of brain architecture, but also to the, uh, the stability of our brain chemistry.